Before World War I, the Dutch had a problem. They had a small overseas empire. I mean, what European country didn't? Even Belgium did at that point. But unlike many European nations, their navy was basically useful as a colonial police force, and that was about it. If anyone actually felt like taking over these colonies, there was very little they could have actually done about it. Having realised this, they decided to do something about it. Originally, this was going to be a small fleet of battleships, armed with eight 14-inch guns, designed for long-range battles in the Java Sea. However, the outbreak of the First World War prevented this plan from developing any further, and instead three cruisers would be ordered. These would be the Java Class. The Java Class were classic light cruisers of immediate pre-war design. A light 3-inch armour belt protected the ships from small-caliber naval fire, whilst the main armament consisted of 10 single 5.9-inch guns in individual turrets, two super-firing forward and two at the rear, with three down each side for a total broadside of seven guns. Eight 40mm anti-aircraft guns and eight machine guns completed the armament as no torpedoes were carried. Unfortunately, the circumstances of World War I meant the ships were significantly delayed, not launching until 1921 and eventually being commissioned in 1925, by which point their design had been superseded by newer and more heavily armed cruisers. Additionally, the class flagship, HN LMS Celebes, was cancelled and the material was used instead to build the De Reuter, which followed similar lines but had less armour and fewer guns, Although using twin turrets, the same broadside was maintained as the ship had a pair of twin turrets forward, a twin tu turret aft, and two flanking single turrets on the wings. The ships that were completed were the Java and the Sumatra, named after the areas they were designed to defend. During the interwar years, they spent most of their time with the rest of the small Dutch fleet patrolling the Dutch East Indies, with a brief interlude escorting convoys back to Europe during the Spanish Civil War. Both ships received refits shortly before the outbreak of the Second World War and were active when the Germans invaded the Netherlands. The Java was in the Pacific at the time and the Sumatra was in Europe. Sumatra took the Dutch royal family to safety in Canada after a stopover in England to have devices fitted to protect it from magnetic mines. She subsequently would take part in convoy escort duties before heading to the Dutch East Indies in late 1940. As war with Japan escalated, she managed to avoid damage and eventually ended up going back to England in late 1942 as problems with her engines made her unfit for active duty. Her guns were removed for use in the very successful Flores-class gunboats, which were also Dutch, and the ship herself was sunk as a block ship off Norm the Normandy coast as part of an artificial harbour made to protect and supply the Allied landings. The Java likewise managed to escape damage in the early part of the war with Japan, but in early 1942 she found herself as part of the American-British-Dutch-Australian Command. The primary striking power of this organisation consisted of a small fleet thrown together from whatever Allied ships happened to be in the area in an attempt to counter the Japanese Navy's attacks. Her first major battle was the Battle of Badung Strait, where the Java, De Reuter, and the even lighter Dutch cruiser Tromp along with a number of American and one Dutch destroyer, attempted to stop the Japanese invasion of Sumatra. Unfortunately, the opposing Japanese destroyers used a torpedo to sink the Dutch destroyer and forced the American destroyers to withdraw with their gunfire. The Tromp was then hit repeatedly by destroyer gunfire and forced to withdraw with heavy damage. In exchange, the Japanese suffered a bit of damage to their destroyer force. The Java and De Reuter, as well as the surviving destroyers, fell back to join up with a pair of heavy cruisers and an additional light cruiser, the HMS Exeter, USS Houston, and HMAS Perth, respectively, along with a mixture of American, British, and Dutch destroyers. Overall command fell to Admiral Doorman aboard the De Reuter. This force then attacked the Japanese troop convoy invading the area and engaged the escorting force, which consisted of a pair of heavy cruisers, a pair of light cruisers, and 14 destroyers. However, individually the Japanese cruisers were far more heavily armed in terms of guns, and they also had far superior torpedoes. The initial attack went badly, with the Exeter crippled and forced to withdraw by a hit to her engines, a Dutch destroyer sunk by a torpedo, and a British destroyer burnt out and abandoned, all in exchange of a damaging one Japanese destroyer. 
At this point, the Allied fleets broke contact as the four American destroyers decided, for some reason, that they were just going to leave at this point without any orders to actually do so. Shortly after, another British destroyer would hit a mine and sink. The remaining force was now just four cruisers, which ran into the Japanese cruisers again deep into the night, and both Java and De Reuter would be hit and sunk by torpedoes from the Japanese cruisers without inflicting much damage on their enemies. Admiral Dorman going down with his ship. None of the fleet's major units would survive much longer. The Perth and Houston were ambushed the next night by Japanese light cruisers and destroyers, and two days later the Exeter was intercepted by four heavy cruisers and also sunk. With these losses, the Japanese would now face almost no naval opposition to their campaign in the immediate future. This also spelled the end of the Dutch colonies, as they would never come under full Dutch control again. The wrecks of the various ships were discovered in good condition in the early 2000s, but unfortunately illegal salvaging has subsequently destroyed them. Unfortunately, not all ship stories have a happy ending. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.